Pew Mathematics. Paper 1. Advanced Subsidiary. Wednesday, 15 May 2019. Answer all questions and ensure that your answers to parts of questions are clearly labeled. You, you should show sufficient working to make your methods clear. Answers without working may not gain full credit. Question number one. The line L1 has equation 2x plus 4y minus 3 equals to 0. The line L2 has equation y equals to mx plus 7, where m is a constant. Given that L1 and L2 are perpendicular, find the value of m. The lines L1 and L2 meet at the point P. Find the x-coordinate of P. So the first thing you want to do, you want to write the equation of the line L1 as y equals to mx plus c. And m would be the gradient. So you rearrange this to make y the subject. So you take 2x to the right, it becomes minus 2x. You take minus 3 to the right, it becomes plus 3. It's 4 times y. You divide by 4. Minus 2 divided by 4 and 3 divided by 4. So you have y equals to minus 2 over 4x plus 3 over 4. So minus 2 over 4 is the gradient of L1. And this statement, if two lines are perpendicular, the product of their gradient is minus 1. Or you can say the gradient of line 2 is equal to minus 1 divided by the gradient of line 1. So minus 1 divided by the gradient of line 1 is minus 2 over 4. And that will be minus 1 divided by minus 2 over 4. That gives you 2. So the gradient of line 2 is 2. And you can write the equation of line 2 as y equals to 2x plus 7. The lines L1 and L2 meet at the point P. Find the x coordinates of P. So we've got line L1 and line L2. So when the two lines meet, that means L1 is equal to L2. So L1 is equal to L2. And we need to solve that equation for x. We put all the x to the left. So 2x goes to the left. It becomes minus 2x. Plus 3 over 4 goes to the right. It becomes minus 3 over 4. So 2x over 4, minus 2x over 4, minus 2x, it gives you minus 5 over 2x. 7 minus 3 over 4, it gives you 25 over 4. Now it's times minus 5 over 2 times x. So you divide by minus 5 over 2. So x becomes minus 2.5. So that's your complete solution for question number 1. m is equals to 2 and x is equals to minus 2.5. Question number 2. Find using algebra the real solutions to the equation 16a squared equals to 2 root a and part b, b to the 4 plus 7b squared minus 18 equals to 0. So what do you want to do first is you divide by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8 and 2 divided by 2 will be 1. Now, after that, we, divided by, we divide by a to the power half. So 8a squared divided by a to the power half and equals to a to the half divided by a to the half. a to the half would cancel. That will give you 1. 8a squared divided by a to the half. a squared divided by a to the half is the same as a squared minus a half a to the power 2 minus a half, that gives you a to the power 3 over 2. And then you divide by 8. So you divide by 8, it becomes 1 over 8 on the right hand side. Because 8 divided by 8 on the left would be 1, and then 1 divided by 8 on the right. Now a to the power 3 over 2 is equals to 1 over 8. So to 
the inverse of 3 over 2 is 2 over 3. So you want to find 1 over 8 to the power 2 over 3. And that gives you 1 over 4 as one of the answers. And you can deduce that a equals to 0 is also a solution because if you have 0 squared times 16 will be 0 and square root of 0 is 0. So 0 is equal to 0. So you can deduce that 0 is one of the solutions or you can do algebra to show it. And to show that A equals to 0 is one of the solutions, we can solve the question this way. We can have 16A squared minus 2A to the half is equal to 0. We can divide by 2. So it becomes 8A squared divided by 2 divided by 2 it becomes 8A squared minus A to the half equals to 0. Factorize A to the half out of the bracket. So it becomes a to the half, 8a to the 3 over 2, because 3 over 2 plus a half will give you squared, a squared. So 8a to the 3 over 2 minus 1 equals to 0. So either a to the half is equals to 0, or 8a to the power 3 over 2 minus 1 equals to 0. a to the half equals to 0. And so a equals to square root of zero and a is equals to zero. So that's the one which you can deduce or you can use that algebra. And on the right hand side, you want to solve that. You take one to the right. So a to the power three over two is equals to one over eight because you divide by eight. And a would be one over eight to the power two over three, which would give you one over four. So that's the complete solution for question two. A is equals to one over four and A is equals to zero. The second part of question two, you can let X to be equals to B squared. So that will give us B to the four becomes X squared plus seven X minus 18 equal to zero. When you factorize, it becomes X plus nine x minus 2 equals to 0. That means x equals to minus 9 or x equals to 2. b squared equals to minus 9 because you replace x with b squared. So x is now b squared. b squared minus 9 equals to 0 and b is equal to square root of 9. And the square root of 9 of minus 9 is 3i complex number. So we ignore this solution. If you see there in the calculator, I've put it in the complex mode so that when you have square root of minus nine, it gives you three i. But we're going to ignore this answer. We look at the other side, x equals to two, b squared equals to two because we replace x with b squared. So b is equals to square root of two. So b is equals to plus or two or b is equals to minus square root of two. So those are the two answers for that equation. Question number three, given that K is a constant, find integral of four over X cubed plus K X. Hence find the value of K such that integral from zero to two of that function equals to eight. We're going to use this formula here for integration. So when you integrate dy over dx of X to the power N, Add one to the power and divide by that new power. Remember, add one to the power, divide by the new power, and don't forget to add the constant of integration. That's what we're going to use to integrate. So for question 3a, we take the x cubed to the top, to the numerator, it becomes x to the minus three. So to integrate that, we add one minus three plus one, it gives you minus two and we divide by that minus three plus one which is the minus two so it's four x to the minus two divided by minus two kx to the power one we add one to the power one plus one divided by one plus one add one to the power divide by the power the new power it becomes k squared kx squared over two four divided by minus two 
gives you minus two. So it's minus two X to the minus two plus K X squared over two plus don't forget the constant of integration C. So that's your answer for when you integrate it. Question 3B, hence find the value of K. Hence means you use your answer from part A, the answer you had before. That would make it easier. So when we integrated it, we had 2x to the minus 2. So we can write it as minus 2 over x squared plus 1 over 2kx squared. That's what we had from before. So we substitute in two, two goes for X and two goes for X. And after that, we substitute 0 0.5, 0 0.5 goes for X and 0 0.5 goes for X and we subtract them. So when we put two first, it becomes minus two over two squared minus half K times four minus, and then in bracket minus two over 0.5 squared plus half K times 0.5 squared. And that should all be equals to eight. So we simplify the first bracket. We'll get minus a half plus 2K. Minus and minus there becomes a plus. And that will be eight minus, this would become 0.125K equals to eight. Eight on the left side minus eight on the right side. So 1.875K is equals to half because 2k minus 0.125k, you get 1.875k equals to half. So k is half divided by 1.875. So that gives you k to be four over five. Question number four, a tree was planted in the ground. Its height h meters was measured t years after planting. And using the linear model, find an equation linking h and t. So we can call, we have x axis, y axis, but this time we're calling it t and h. So the t represents the x axis, the h represents your y axis. So at zero, zero, that's time zero is start, the height is zero. When the time is three, three years, the height is 2.35 meters. When it's six years, it's 3.28 meters. So if you were to plot that on a graph, you can find the gradient, the change in Y over change in X and using that formula. And we're using Y equals MX plus C. So we can write the first equation, Y equals to AX plus B, Y equals to 0 0.31X plus 1.42. So H is, or you can write it as H is equals to 0 0.31T plus 1.42. And you may wonder where we got this 0 0.31 and 1.42 from. If you enter this number on in your calculator using statistics mode, so you enter the three and you enter the six, enter the 2.35 and the 3.28, and you use the linear regression, it would give you the gradient of 0.31 and the intercept of 1.42. So that's where that comes from. So the 0 0.31 comes from there and the 1.42, the intercept on the y-axis comes from there. So that's how you get that without even working out the calculation using the algebraic method. Or you can work out the gradient or find C and you will still get the same thing. Question 4B, when we use the same, the H is 0 0.31T plus 1.42. When T is equal to zero, we got H to be one, and H is 140 centimeters. So 140 meters is approximately one, 140 centimeters is similar to 142 centimeters, approximately 142 centimeters. So that's what you had for, it's written neatly for 4A and for 4B, you just compare 140 centimeters is similar to 1.42 meters. 
and you make a valid comment, it should support the use of linear model as the values are close together. And you can see here when you plot a graph that these two points, you almost, you can put a line and you get almost a straight line graph. Question number five, a curve has equation, find in the simplest form dy over dx. So to find differentiation, we're using this formula there on the right hand side. When you differentiate, you subtract one from the power, you multiply by the power and subtract one from the power. Multiply by the power, subtract one from the power. So got three x squared, so we multiply by two. So be two times three, which will give you six and subtract one from two, which will give you two minus one gives you one, so six x. If we take x to the top, it becomes x to the minus one. So you multiply by minus 1, it gives you minus 24. You subtract 1, it becomes minus 2. So it's minus 24 over x squared. And when you differentiate 2, you get 0. So your answer for dy over dx is 6x minus 24 over x squared. Hence, find the exact range of values of x for which the curve is increasing for part b. When it is increasing, dy over dx is greater than 0. The gradient is greater than zero. That means it's going up, increasing. So we would take, hence means we use the answer from before. That's what hence means. Don't use another method, use the answer from before. So that differential, the y over the x, we put it greater than zero. We need to solve it. So we can multiply by x squared, multiply by x squared, multiply by x squared, multiply by x squared. So that'll give us 6x cubed minus 24 is greater than zero because this x squared here would cancel. And x times x squared will give you x cubed. And x squared times zero will give you zero. So we take 24 to the right hand side, it becomes positive 24. So 6x cubed is greater than 24. You divide by six, 24 divided by six is four. So x cubed is greater than four and we find the cube root of four. So X is greater than the cube root of four or four to the power one over three. And if you plot it on your calculator, you will see that point there. That is the point four to the one over three, which is 1.58 something. And you can see from there, it is increasing. So dy over dx is greater than zero. So from this point, it is going but up. So that means dy over dx is greater than zero. So that's the increasing. So it's increasing from here. That's why, so we say x is greater than from there going up. So these are graphs which shows you the information. And you use this for V window. You go from minus 10 for x up to 10. And for y, you go for minus 100 to 100. So you can see everything clearly. And that was where you have 4 to the 1 over 3 is 1.58. So that's it there. 4 to the 1 over 3 is 1.58, which is that point there. And that's the point which is increasing. If you plot the original function plus the differential function, which is in red, you can see from that point there, it is only increasing. That shows it to you that the differential function is increasing. That's a visual way to look at what you have done to check your answer is correct. Question number six, figure one shows a sketch of a triangle ABC with AB is three X, AC is two X and the angle CAB is 60. Show that X is equal to two root three. We want to use this formula of circles for area of a triangle, half A, B sine C. A is one of the sides, B is the other side, and C is the angle in between. Remember that A is one of the sides, B is the other side, and C is the angle between them. So you put that in the formula, and so the area is 18 root 3, A is 2x, B is 3x, and sine of C is sine 60. And when you sign 60 is with three over two. So you would multiply 
you take the half to the right, that means you times 18 by 2, it becomes 36 root 3. It's equal to 3 root 3 times x squared. 6 divided by 2, it gives you 3. Now you divide by 3 root 3 to get x squared. So take 3 root 3 to the left. So 36 root 3 divided by 3 root 3. The 3 root 3 will cancel. So you're left with 12. And x is the square root of 12, which is 2 root 3. Q, E, D. It means quote erat demonstratum as required to show. Because they wanted us to show that. And when you finish showing that, you write Q, E, D. It means you have shown it. Question 6b says, hence find the exact length of BC, giving your answer as a simplified set. Hence means you use your answer from before. And we're going to use this formula I've put there. It's the cosine rule. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. So what we want is you got CB. Find the length of BC. We got CB or we'll call it BC. So BC squared, I've colored it in pink, is equals to, how do we get to CA or AC? It's 2X. So 2 times X is 2 root 3. 2 times 2 root 3, because we found X before. X is 2 root 3 from part A. So 2 times 2 root 3 will give us 4 root 3. And for 3X, it will be 3 times 2 root 3. That will give us 6 root 3. So we know. So that means BC squared. The BC squared is equals to 6 root 3 squared plus 4 root 3 squared minus 2 times 6 root 3 times 4 root 3 cos 16. Put all of that in your calculator. Be courageous and put all of it at once. It will work. Make sure you put the brackets. Put it all at once in your calculator. Take your time and you will get 84. And then after you find square root of it, it will give you 2 root 21. Or you can even find square root at the same time. It does work when you do it all at once. So get BC to be 2 square root of 21 centimeters. Question number 7. The curve has C has equation y equals to k squared over x plus 1. Sketch C stating the equation of the horizontal asymptote. So this is the curve. We can just choose k to be any number if you want to try it on your calculator. You can say k to be 2. So 2 squared will be 4. So you can put in your graphics calculator y over y equals to 4 over x plus 1. And you will get this general shape. So that means you would see that this plus 1 is like sketching the graph of y equals to 4 over x. Plus 1 means the y move 1 up. So it was in 0, 0, it shift 1 up. So the asymptote is now y is equals to 1, this point there. And that's the general shape of the graph. Everything has moved up by 1. The line L has equation y equals minus 2x plus 5. Show that the x coordinate of any point of intersection of L with C is given by the solution of the equation. So we want to combine equations. K squared over x plus 1 is the curve and minus 2x plus 5 is a line. So the curve and the line, we make them equal. The curve equals to the line. So to get rid of the x in the denominator, we times this by x times this by x, times this by x, times this by x. So that will give us k squared plus 1x is equal to minus 2x squared plus 5x. And we take minus 2x squared to the left, take 5x to the left. Minus 2x squared goes to the left, it becomes plus 2x squared. Plus 5x goes to the left, it becomes minus 5x. And we have the plus 1x we have the plus k squared equals to zero. We put my collect like terms. Minus 5x plus 1x is minus 4x. So you end up with 2x squared minus 4x plus k squared equals to zero. 
QED as required to show For part C, it says, hence find the exact values of K for which L is a tangent to C. When it says a tangent, it means it touches it at one point. So there's one value. So B squared minus 4AC is equals to zero. So our A is two, our B is minus four, our C is K squared. Watch that again. A is two, B is minus four, C is K squared. We put that neatly, minus four squared for B squared, minus four times two for A times K squared. Simplify that, that gives you 16 minus eight K squared equals to zero. Minus eight K squared goes to the right, it becomes eight K squared. So eight K squared equals to 16, K squared is 16 over eight and K is square root of that, which is plus or minus square root of two and if you were to plot it on a graph for question 7a to see what it looks like let's say you have taken k squared to be two squared for example four so that you get a general idea that's what the graph will look like and you would know that asymptote would down, be down there so it's just an idea for you to check the graphs using the calculator and you will put x the view window x to be minus 10 so you start from minus 10 up to plus 10 and it goes from minus 10 there up to plus 10 at the top so you can use the standard in the calculator to get that shape to get an idea what the graph will look like question number eight find the first three terms in ascending powers of x of the binomial expansion of that 2 plus 3x over 4 to the power 6 giving each term in its simplest form For binomial expansion, we need to use this formula there. A plus B to the power N is A to the N, N combination one, A to the N minus one B and so on. And you can use this to work out the coefficients or you can use your calculator. So two plus three X over four to the power six. So the two represents the A, very important. You watch this carefully. The A is the two and your B is three X over four and your N is six. Once you know what A, B and N are, you use the formula. So six combination zero, two to the power six, which is A to the power N, two to the power six, three over four X to the power zero. And then after that six combination one, two to the power six minus one is five, and three over four X to the power one. After that six combination two, two to the power six minus two is four and three over X or three X over four squared. And you will use your calculator to work out these values. Two to the power six, two to the power six will give you 64. And then the second one, six combination one is six two to the power times two to the power five times three over four will give you 144 X and six combination two is 15 times two to the power four times three over four squared gives you 135 X squared. For number eight B, explain how you could use your expansion to estimate the value of 1.925 to the power six. You do not need to perform the calculation. So what you want to do is you want to write two plus three X over four to the power six is equals to 1.925 to the power six. And we want to solve for X. What you're going to substitute in. If you notice the power six is the same on both sides. So we can take that out. So what is in bracket two plus three X over four should be equals to 1.925. We solve it for X. If we take two to the right side, it becomes minus two. So 1.925 minus two, it gives us minus 0 0.075 is equals to three over four X. Now it's times three over four X. We take it to the other side, to the right, it becomes divided by three over four X. So X would be minus 0 
So you solve for X and then substitute this value into the expression from A. So if we were to do perform the calculation, X is minus 0 0.1. So wherever we see X, we put minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1. And that's why they say explain. We just explain that we will substitute X to be minus 0 0.1. And then we solve it, but they say we shouldn't do the calculation. Question number nine. A company started mining tin in Riverdale on 1st January 2019. Calculate part A. Calculate the mass of tin that will be mined up to 1st January 2020. So to calculate that, you start from 2019, 1st of January, in New Year's Day, up to New Year's Day 2020. The difference is one year. 2020 minus 2019 is one year. So that means N is equals to one. So we write that expression and we put N is one. So 1,200 minus three bracket one minus 20, N is one. Put that in your calculator. It gives us T to be 117 tons. That's what they would extract. Question 9B, deduce the maximum total mass of tin that could be mined. Because we are minusing this from 1,200, we can never go above 1,200. Remember that we can never go above 1,200 because we are minusing that from it, we are not adding. So what happens is that to get 1,200, all of this would have to be zero. So that when we minus zero, it stays 1,200. So the maximum total mass of tin that could be mined is when all of this is zero. So it would be 1,200. Calculate the mass part C. Calculate the mass of tin that will be mined in 2023. We started, we can find what is being mined in 2023 that year. So we can find up to 2023, so we can find it for n equals to five. So if we put n equals to five, it would give us 1,200 minus three bracket five minus 20, it gives us five, two, five. If we put n equals to four, we will get 432. And when we subtract it, we will get 93 tons. Now you ask, why did we put five and why did we put four? We started in 2019 and we want it for 2024. So if we get the total up to 2024, at the end of 2024, which is five years, and we minus what we had for the first four years, that will give us what we had for the fifth year. So everything for the four year, five years minus what we did for the four years, will give us what we want for that fifth year. That's how you think about it. Part D, 90, state giving reasons the limitation on the values of N. The model is only valid for values of N such that N is less than or equals to 20. The total amount mine cannot decrease. We cannot have numbers. The total amount mine cannot decrease. So that's one of the things which you can write. And you can represent it on your graph. If you put that, that curve, y equals to 1,200 minus three bracket n minus 20 squared, you will get this shape, parabola shape. And you can use the minimum to be minus 20, maximum to be 50 for x. So minus 20 up to 50. And you go from minus 500 for the y up to 2000 so that you can see it clearly and you can see that the maximum value is 1200 you can enter x value to find y value so the maximum is 1200 and when x is 20 that shows you visually what it is you were doing 